Hey, what's up, guys? This is Chris, and this is my channel, Bar911970. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to check out this video. And we have some more learning lessons I would like to provide for you guys, for those that want to want to listen. Why do bad things happen? There's so many different ways you could take that. As you see in several videos, especially the new ones I make, it's all about you. Your perception of reality is whatever you want it to be based on your feelings about it. That's why they're always telling you put your heart into something. And always remembering that since everything is made of light, made of energy, and your feelings dictate really how you will do things. When you put your heart into something, you're going to do it. I mean, for example... If you had to jump off a hundred foot bridge into the ocean for no reason, most of you probably wouldn't do it for fear of what could happen. But if, heaven forbid, your child fell down and you had to jump to save their life, well, you'd do it in an instant without hesitation. The only thing that changes is your perception. So what is it about bad situations? Why do they keep happening? The reason they keep happening is you don't realize that pain is a learning tool. It helps you to progress to a different level. And when you don't learn the lesson, it's like not graduating from high school. If you keep failing the 12th grade, you'll keep doing it over and over again until either one, you give up, or two, you pass. It's the same thing with everything in life. When something bad happens to you, the majority of people will say, oh, woe is me, or I can't believe this is happening, and get depressed. They don't figure out, well, why is this happening? What is it that I am to learn from whatever scenario is happening? So you can grow from it, you stay stagnant. And the same thing keeps happening over and over again. You haven't noticed that in your life? How people have one bad relationship after another and it's a different person but the same situation? Or they keep losing their job and no matter what they do, they can't get a break? And all these scenarios continually keep happening? It's like, oh, I have such bad luck. Well, if you watch my videos and you see that you get what you give and you, your reality is based on your perception, if you keep saying, oh, that's my luck, well, that's what you're going to get back because of the fact that everything is made of light, energy, magnetism. You reap what you sow, you attract. That's why when you're liking somebody, you're attracted to them. And if you don't like somebody, you're repelled. They repel you. So if you look and again, I've said it all has to do with perception and perspective. If you see a situation as a learning lesson, when something bad happens, pain is a body's way of letting you know something's wrong. So you ever hear the old joke, hey, doc, it hurts when I do this. Well, then don't do that. Doesn't hurt anymore, does it? If that's what was causing it. If you're pinching your cheek and it hurts every time you pinch it, well, stop pinching it. It no longer hurts. The pain is gone. You learn through the painful experience not to do such a dumb thing. There's an old story that I heard. I don't remember who told me it. But it shows about how pain and hardship and struggle is actually good when you realize there's a reason behind it. And I don't know if I've told the story before, but even if I have, it's been a while. So I'm going to tell it again. It's a story of a little girl who's just walking through the woods behind her house. It's the regular path that she travels every day and plays. And she happens to come along a little branch where she sees this little cocoon. And she sees this cocoon wiggle. The girl's curious. She just takes it off the branch and puts it in her hand and sees it break open just a little bit. She sees what looks to be a butterfly trying desperately to get out of this cocoon. So the little girl sits there and says, I want to help this poor butterfly. And she pries open 
the cocoon, helping to set the butterfly free. And she smiles in amazement how that butterfly just comes out of the cocoon, walks to her finger's edge, but instead of flying away, it falls to the ground and dies. And the girl sits there in just utter like perplexity, wondering, well, what just happened? I did a nice thing. I tried to help that butterfly. I got it out of its bondage. I set it free. Why didn't it fly away? Why did it die? And she goes home and she researches only to learn that a butterfly, in order to get its wings strong enough to fly, it has to struggle to free itself from the cocoon because that's what builds the strength in the wings. And because even though her intentions were good, drowned to good and good intentions, and she thought by helping it, it would do good. She, for, she kept that butterfly from getting the strength it needed for the wings to fly. Bet she never did that again. Because if she did it again, then her intent was to actually hurt the butterfly. If she didn't, then she learned through that painful experience what not to do. And it's like us as children. We're told as children, oh, don't touch the stove, you'll burn your hand. Well, what are what most of us end up ultimately doing, whether on purpose or by accident, we end up touching a hot stove, we burn our hand. Well, we don't spend 20, 30, 40 years of our lives saying, oh my God, I can't believe I touched my, my hand on the stove and oh, that hurt and I didn't like that pain and oh, I feel so bad. No, you learn never to do it again. Because if you do it again, especially purposely, then you're trying to hurt yourself. But you used it as a learning tool. The problem is when we have negativity and bad things happening, we don't try and sit there and say, well, what is the reasoning for this? What lesson can I learn from it? Because we're told that we're not good enough. We're not strong enough. We're not beautiful enough. We're not smart enough. Tell a lie long enough, it becomes the truth. But again, since everything is a matter of perception and perspective, you don't have to agree with that. Because like I've said in my law videos, in the U.S. Constitution, in the 13th Amendment, where they're telling you your rights, it's funny how other human beings are telling you what your rights are, even though... If you know anything about any religion, we were just placed here to be fruitful and multiply, not to sit at a desk and type on a computer all day. But we'll believe what we're told. You tell a lie long enough, it becomes the truth. So you can change anything in your world. You just have to put your heart into it. You have to erase your belief system. That's why they, they always say constantly, put your heart into it. Because if you think about things are based on emotion, and you will change your reality based on that, and that's why your heart pumps when you're excited, it also pumps when you're scared. The adrenaline. But think about the word emotion and break it down. E motion e energy e equals mc squared e is energy emotion energy in motion when you have negativity in your life and you see it for what it is a learning lesson you can learn that failure erases one possibility and an endless possibility of scenarios to ever happen you're never trapped you're never stuck you may think that, and if you think that and believe that, it becomes your reality, and thus you are stuck. If you are in a room that's about to flood, and you have four exits, three of which are closed, well, if you try and open the first door and it's locked, well, you've failed. 
Well, if you fall to the ground crying and say, oh my God, I failed. What am I ever going to do? Well, that room is going to, let's say it's filling with water. If you failed to leave the room with that first attempt and you give up, well, guess what? You're going to drown. But you've now learned instead of four doors to wait, to be out, the way, find the way out. Now you only have three. So you've eliminated one. So if you open a second door and it's locked, you say, oh my God, I keep trying and I keep failing. That's twice I failed. Fall to the ground, cry and do all that stuff. Well, the inevitable happens. You drowned. But now instead of four choices, narrow it down to three choices. Now there are only two choices. Narrows it down, doesn't it? You open the third door. Doesn't open. God, I have no luck. I keep having the same thing happen over and over again. I've now failed three times. That's it. I give up. Well, fall to the ground and cry. Be angry. Kick and scream all you want. You're drowning. But now, you failed three times, but it showed three possibilities that you no longer have to partake in anymore. Because it'd be silly to waste your energy trying to open three doors that you already know are locked. Just because they're familiar. You have one door left. Just open the door and walk out and you will not drown. And life can be that simple. Or it can be that difficult. It's whatever you want. If you want life to be challenging and say, you know, whatever the greatest quote is and you want to believe in it and think, oh, well, they told us this is happening. If that's what you want to believe, then that means they're showing you one particular channel and you'll believe that's the only channel in an endless amount of radio stations and television stations out there. Let's change the channel or shut it off or make your own program. It's all a choice. And that's why, like I was saying before about the involuntary servitude. With the 13th Amendment, they talk about the fact that a slave has to do with involuntary servitude. In other words, they can't take you and make you do something because that's involuntary. You're not volunteering. But if they can trick you into volunteering your servitude, well, then you're no longer protected because you have given your servitude, even though they tricked you or scared you into doing it or bribed you into doing it. That's why they want people either scared or entertained. Either way, you're distracted and you're not doing anything to change the situation. Throw you a few breadcrumbs and you'll dance in the streets. Scare you to death, you'll hide under your bed. Depress you, you'll, un you'll be unmotivated to change what it is that you hate. And you'll sit there and say, woe is me. And it's like that movie in Back to the Future. Hello, McFly. And it's like the Wizard of Oz. You've had the power to go home all along. You just needed brains, heart, and courage to realize that it was just a man behind the curtain. There are metaphors for a reason. There are messages for those willing to hear them. And you'll be programmed on how to think. Like one of my friends, Donnie, he's a great guy, love him to death, but he's convinced that there is a Narabu, a planet that's going to come and destroy the Earth. And he says, you can't change reality. Well, Donnie, please explain to me, and I'm not hating, I'm not doubting. I mean, it's your reality. If that's what you want to believe, then that's what's going to happen in your perception. But what is reality? Nothing is real. You see this, this right here. This is a crystal, okay? Looks like I'm touching it. But if you put this under an electron microscope and magnify it a couple of thousand times, my finger will seem miles away. You take the Empire State Building and reduce the space in between each atom because if you know anything about atoms, they are 99.9999999% empty space. Just the relativity based on size. It's like, for example, this room, if I filled it with bowling balls, 
to the ceiling. I couldn't move. But an ant could quite easily. What about a bacteria on that ant? What about an atom on that bacteria on that ant? It probably wouldn't even know the bowling balls are even there. That's what reality is. Reality is nothing more than what you perceive it to be. Because this crystal, depending on the size and the magnetism of how close I look at the distance between my finger and this crystal, it would look like it's not touching. Is that reality? So when you're walking on the ground, you don't realize that you're, you're not touching the ground. It's your atoms touching other atoms, which are separated by 99.9999999% empty space. So for me to walk from my house to the deli down the street would take me five minutes. What would it take a snail? A bacteria would probably take years. A molecule would probably not even know there is a deli because it's so far away it cannot even acknowledge it. So it's all relative to size. So again, re what is reality? The reality, he says, about Nirabu coming. Why? Because somebody showed you some pictures? They showed you a TV screen? And you're believing it to be true? It's not going to happen. And I'll prove it. Whatever deadline you said, I think you said by March 16th. I'll wait into, um, of 2016, I think you said, is the maximum. Well, in April, May, and June of 2016, I'll make a video. And I'll show you, I'm still here. But in an endless universe with endless possibilities, if that's the possibility you want, I mean, if you want to be destroyed, you know, more power to you. And I'm not saying it because I'm trying to make fun of you or, or not make what you're saying relevant. Because if that's what you believe to be true, it is true in your realm, in your reality. But it doesn't have to be true in mine. So I'm not mocking you. I'm not calling you out or calling you crazy because everybody's truth is true because it's their perception. Even believing that you can't change anything. That's up to you. So if you want a world where a planet comes and disrupts or destroys the planet you live on, I don't know why you would want that reality, but that's your choice. That's, like I said, the beauty of free will. And if people want to call you crazy, doesn't mean you're crazy just because they have a different belief system. Because their reality is true for them. So I'm going off on a usual tangent, but when you are depressed, you're unmotivated. That's why they like to depress you. Or if you're distracted with going to strip clubs or just counting all your cash and you know having millions of friends to all distract you from doing all these these truths yes you could be driving around in a lamborghini yes you can have hundreds of friends and yes you could have millions of dollars but if you're not doing anything to change the world then ultimately if the world is meant to be destroyed as some people want to say it is well what about your children what about your children's children what are you doing to prevent it, to make the world better? Because just imagine if there was some cataclysmic event that you believed in and it became your reality and you did nothing to try and change it or alter it or prevent it. What would you tell your kids? I was too busy partying. I was too busy making fun of people trying to help me. You could do whatever you want. That includes nothing. But when you look at pain as life's way of showing you how to not do something, 
then you can turn it around. And then all of a sudden that pain won't be necessary anymore. Because if you put your hand on the stove, you're only going to burn it as long as you touch it. You never touch that stove again, you're never going to be burned. I mean, you watch these, these reality TV shows where they talk about the prisons, people in prison, and how cruel it is, and how people can potentially get raped or murdered or whatever. Well, if you never do anything that puts you there, you'll never have to worry about what the experience is. Rob a bunch of banks, shoot a bunch of people, rape somebody, do something that can put you in there. Well, you're going to find out pretty quick what it's like. The idea is not to put yourself in that position, and that's all about control. You have more control than you will ever know. You need the courage, heart, and strength to know that you have the power to go home anytime you want. And you can believe whatever you want. doesn't make it true or untrue. There are millions of channels. Do you want to just watch one? That's your prerogative. But don't be disappointed or upset or sad or depressed or angry or frustrated or annoyed or whatever because you're only watching the same program over and over again. It's you that continues to watch it. Learn. When something presents itself there's a reason for it. If you ignore that reason, it gets worse and repetitive and it will never end until it defeats you or you defeat it. That's up to you. And I hope you will see it from a different perspective. Now, the next time something bad happens, instead of saying, woe is me, instead of saying, oh, you know, this is always happens, say, okay, why is it happening and what can I do to change it? And I'll give you a prime example from me. One of the things that used to bother me, especially on this channel, was the people that used to make fun of me and to put the, all the thumbs down on the videos. And I was always trying so hard to get them to like me or appreciate me or try and talk on their level, thinking I can communicate with them. And continually got more and more attacked, got more and more thumbs down, more and more people were making fun of me. And it bothered me. It affected me. But it was my choice. Now, if somebody wants to thumb it down or make a video making fun of me, okay, it's just their opinion. It only bothers me if I allow it. And they can call me crazy. Does it sound like I don't know what I'm talking about? Does it sound like I'm ir irrational just because I talk differently? That makes you crazy and that's just somebody's opinion? Think that people want to thumb it down? Okay. It's not going to change the message. It's not going to change the fact that there might be only one person, but if that one person gets something positive out of this, then I've done something good to help a fellow human being. What are they doing? It took effort to make this video. It takes no effort to hit a thumbs down. But I used to let it bother me. To the point where I wanted to give up. Well, how many people, when I gave up and didn't make videos for weeks, how many people were I helping? And I, luckily, I decided to not shut down my channel and I kept the videos up to continually help people. But we make our own destiny. We make our own reality. I would love for somebody to define what reality is when reality is nothing more than just your perception. I mean, you want to base things on reality? Please describe to me jealousy, rage, love, fear. All your emotions. What creates your emotions? What do emotions look like? How much of it do we have? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? Which particular body part secretes envy? You can't prove those things. Does that mean they don't exist? And you could sit there and say, well, I can't prove them. So that means they must not exist. So I don't believe in them anymore. Does that mean you're not feeling them? Some of you will get this, many of you will not. The ones that don't want to try and change their world must be happy with the world they're living in. Because it's like somebody continually punching you in the face. If you stand there and let them keep doing it, well, you must like it. Otherwise, you'd move out of the way or stop it. 
But sitting there complaining about it, it's like, oh, I can't believe this is happening to me and this hurts and this is so unfair and why does it have to happen to me? Well, while you're doing that, you're still getting punched. You're still being damaged. If you stop them or move out of the way, you don't have to say a word. And that's what they're hoping you'll never figure out. Thanks for watching, guys. My name is Chris. This is my channel, Barnon 11970 You know what to do. Have a great day. And thanks for watching. Peace.